We'll get all our ducks in a row as we do a pre-show here on the Rants of Izzo on uh, Spreely TV. Okay, I don't want you. Um, you're still going, though. You should be. All right, kids. It's a new week. It is uh, Tuesday here on the Rants of Izzo on Spreely.com. Welcome. Hope you guys had a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. Um, I'll look at something. Yeah, okay, awesome. We're running a whole new bunch of stuff today. We got uh, Eric Butler from Report No Pints sitting in. <clears throat> and I, I switched something up, so guess what? If you ever want to talk to any of my guests live, you can. You want to talk to Eric? You can call in 708-982-0974. 708-982-0974. If you're watching that little uh, number on the bottom of your screen, call, and you can ask Eric any type of question you got. Eric, I heard you have an awesome book that's for sale. Can you tell everybody about what your book is? Yeah, you know what? I have it right here. So this is a New York City 2020. We'll call it a coffee table book, right? Yeah, right. Eight and a half by 11, full color pages documenting the demise of New York City. And I can only imagine it's gotten worse since then. But just a bunch of photos I took when I couldn't go to work. So go ahead and buy that on Amazon. It's also on Barnes & Noble if you're super advert, you know, anti-Amazon, totally understandable. I get but, that. Uh, yeah, go get it. I get that. And support our channel. Buy my book, Before the Badge, Everything You Need to Know Before You Become a Cop. Also available at Words Matter Publishing, Amazon, and barnesandnoble.com. Spreely.com is your one-stop shop. Why am I saying this every damn day? Guys, go to Spreely.com from your phone. When you go there, it says download the app. Download the app. Make your life simpler. On Spreely, news articles, past shows, some phenomenal videos from Eric and Report and Alpine. You want uh, podcasts? We got them. You want vidcasts? We got them. You want a social media where you do not get censored? It's there. It's there. We also have a show chat. I hide that one. If you want to get involved in the chat, hi, Bev. Hi, April. Shone. Amy. Uh, I know there's some other people. Sarah. Let me look who else is in the chat. I don't have my glasses on. That chat is available on um, Telegram at RansomIzzoShow.com. All right, speaking of the show, we're going to do a show. That's Sarah, April, Sean, Bev, Amy, Tamika, Carly. Damn, it's awesome. Good to see you guys. Happy Thanks Mother. Thanks for showing up, guys. Yeah, that's just the chat. We know where you're at worldwide. All right, we're going to have a show here on the Ransom Izzo on Spreely. Dot. Tom, welcome. See you guys in a bit. Prepare yourself. The opinions of the host and guests on the show are exclusively just that. Opinions. That means that they shouldn't be the cause of your state of being offended. Why does everybody get so butthurt? Okay, let's go. Ready? Sit down, shut up, and pay attention. This is the Rants of Izzo Show with your host, Dominic Izzo, from porn to politics. We touch every third rail we can find. You might want to put your headphones on so your mom can't hear this. It's been called the most entertaining 60 minutes on the internet. And it starts now. now. Let's do this. Good afternoon. This is the Ransom Vizzo Show here on Spreely TV, Spreely Media, Spreely.com. It's your one-stop shop for freedom of speech. Uh, I'm kind of tired of everybody saying we have a free speech platform, and they don't. We do. So selfishly, I like to tell everybody we have free speech by the balls. We do. All right, it is Tuesday. We guys appreciate giving me Friday and Monday off. It was great. Uh, Matthew will be joining me on Thursday. And then <clears throat> Diva, I talked to Diva. The Diva will be back. She's in a mood to come back, so she will be back. Uh, all right, Eric Butler from Report No Pines joining today. Eric, got to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Got to ask you a question, my man. Um, it's kind of personal. Do you date? Uh, I, I try to. All right. Um, as a man who is, you're in your late thirties, correct? I am. Yeah. That's it's a, it's a, I gotta get the. Right I look screen. pretty good though, right? For yeah, you do. My age. You look insanely young. It's ridiculous. Um. All right. Do you? 
Do you trust? And women? I promise I'm not bald. I wear a hat all the time because yeah, so. I don't have a barber, but I'm not bald just yet. Cut your own hair, dude. I've been doing it for 30 years. Absolutely. Yeah. I still, well, I started when I was 20, 20. No, that's a lie. I've been doing it for 24 years. I started when I was 26. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that just shit the bed. All right. Do you trust women? The answer is no, Eric. The answer is no. Let's have you no. have you seen this video about the birthday cake single mom? I have seen that video. Okay. Now we're gonna uh, for the audience who who has not seen this yet, we're gonna play this. Uh we're gonna start here. Okay, I'm gonna play this. Eric. Can you kind of describe what's going on in this video? Yeah, so this lady, this young lady who's actually, I don't know, pretty attractive, right? Looks like yeah. she's just baking cupcakes on her own. She's got the sad music in the background. Right. And it says, being a single mom is making your own birthday cake on your birthday so that your babies can feel happy. They are singing to you. And, of course, uh, took the time. I mean, look, there's so many levels to this. Yeah. I, I've never been somebody... To um, Thank you under yeah, I gotta go to this. Oh, we'll talk about this one in a second. Uh, I've never been somebody who understands why the fuck people put videos like this up online. Now, there are or there were some it, back when I first started on social media, doing mostly law enforcement commentary. There are some videos that I've had up there that were maybe emotional. I let the cat out of the bag slip with a guest a couple weeks ago. There may be some video content out there of me <sighs> cucking pretty hard to a girl I was dating about 10 years ago. And I was like, baby, baby, I love you. I'm not complete <laughs> without you. And it, 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 I'm not going to lie. It's still out there. And it's like it was three parts, and each part was probably about 10 minutes long. It's fucking pathetic, right? But it's commonplace now uh, to do videos like this for sympathy and empathy. That is a young woman who's attractive who has to put her plight about her single motherhood up online for likes and sympathy, whatever. Here is a, uh, an interesting response that was made by, um, well, I'll let this gentleman just say it. Oh, from her ex-husband. Yeah. Been sent this two days. Um, people ask him. Sorry, the audio was screwed up. So I've been sent this video a lot over the last few days. Um, people ask him my thoughts and my comments on it. And before anyone says, oh, you don't know her situation or, you know, you don't know what she's going through. Well, I do because I lived it. <laughs> um, I'm her ex-husband. And um, right now I have full custody of our kids. This is our parent agreement. As you can see, I have all weekdays and weekends, time sharing with the kids, all at holiday academic breaks. And for her to get any rights back to the kids, these are the things that she needs to do. And yes, child support, she owes that. It's up to over $21,000. So she's a mother and doesn't pay child support. She was then arrested for check fraud, and during that hearing, it turned out that it was found that she stole almost a million dollars from another guy. And also, she faked cancer in the past. These are scans <laughs> that she would send and post on her page uh, before. So, you know, to sum it up, you know, this person, for people that follow her or giving her praise and showing, telling her how strong and how, you know, amazing she's doing, uh, well, she's really not a full-time mom. Um, she barely has her kids. Uh, she goes out all the time, um, and she doesn't even have a job even. So she uh, just really not someone that other single moms should really be looking towards as for inspiration or anything like that. Uh, there are a lot of you know hardworking single moms out there, and a lot of respect to them. All I just want to say is she just isn't one of them. Um, so. Hopefully everyone uh, can see this video and know, you know, who she really is. Peace. Eric, what's your thoughts on this? Well, uh, obviously, long story short, 
she's a scam artist. And I hadn't seen the video of his reply, but I heard something about how, um, yeah, she's kind of like a crazy person. And without getting uh, too personal, oh, I mean, get to, to your, get to, get to your, personal, get to <laughs> your get on the couch. Um, initial question. And I, I obviously, you know, I'm not married. I don't have kids, so it's not quite this bad. But I can remember there was a, a lady I was dating all the way back in Brooklyn. And I went back to uh, visit and, you know, you know, kind of just catch up, shall we say. Right. And then, uh, bro, I'm like hanging out all weekend, dinners, uh, you know, living a, a, a couple's weekend, I guess, shall we say. And then, and then she mentions that, oh yeah, I have a boyfriend. Oh So yeah. it's like, wait, wait. So, and look, I'm not, I'm not hurt by that. Right. Like we were on and off for several months while I was in New York, but imagine being that other guy, imagine being that guy and having to deal with some dude, some Californian coming back to New York and spending the weekend with your girlfriend. I mean, it's completely, so that is a uh, firsthand experience of these women being untrustworthy. They're and that's, all that's liar. Putting nice you word. are being so nice, dude. So nice. I had, I try. Oh my <laughs> God. Oh, I, I it, people don't, let me tell you something firsthand. I'm no angel. I'm no saint. I'm not a good man. I've said this for <laughs> fucking years. I don't know why people say this. I have narcissistic tendencies. I'm a womanizer. I pursue married women. I'm very open about what I do. I'm not proud of it. I just, you know, it is what it is. I uh, dated in uh, 2016 a very, 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 very damn attractive woman who happened to be the biggest fucking liar I've ever met who also happened to be a cop, was a cop. And the and, and it's like, all right, I mean, I put up with a lot of shit because the potential was there. And when that woman said, like, she put the cancer stuff up there, dude, I got that same thing. Hey, my behavior is because I've had brain cancer. And this is, oh, my God. Well, it turns out I never had brain cancer, all this shit. Anyways, fast forward. I broke up with her 2016. I got a text, like, three months ago from this same person. Single mom now, has a kid. So, um, of course, I'm like, well, you know, everybody wants something when they fucking are a single mom. Uh, so I had a conversation, and I said, listen, I said, we got the phone, and I'm like, hey, listen, you know, I this is how I felt about you. It was great. I, I, I would have 100% dated you again, blah, 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 blah. Why'd you fucking lie? And we had a great damn conversation. Well, you did this to put me on the defense. Yeah, I did do that. You're right. Every time there was an argument, I would walk out instead of engaging in arguing. I'm very good at that. I don't fucking want to argue. Bottom line is, I had seen and watched and observed. If any of the behaviors had changed, it's almost 10 fucking years later. It's just still the same issue. We made plans to do something. Hey, let's get coffee. Let's catch up. The same status quo, MO, behavioral patterns of fucking lies, uh, not taking accountability and bullshit happen again. I'm like, man, it's just proof. Women don't fucking change. And they want the they want they want men to just have they want the bear. To be more accountable than the men, right? They want. I just I'm so tired. Of this. And I don't know. I guess, but but they obviously they want it both ways, right? Like we had the the huge old fiasco with Harrison Butker from the Kansas City Chiefs, which of course only a couple of years ago they were mad at the 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 name of the team, so that was bad enough. That went by the wayside. I feel like they didn't even mention that in this new uh this new fiasco, but. You, you're mad at him, certain people, obviously not all, not all, not all, but most, right? People are mad at him for that, but then they also want to be, so they want to step out and, and get abortions and be dishonest, but they also want to be treated like a queen? Like, is this, is this the they fault of Twitter? Want, they don't want accountability. They did. I didn't really plan on going any direction today. So, man, haven't had you on in a week. Let's have some fun, this and that kind of stuff. Now I'm all feeling like, like I'm dragging you down in the pits of hell with this conversation, but we're going, we're well, going, dude. It's we're going to hell with this conversation. Can, and this is this is actually a good tie-in of something that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Um, that I didn't know anything about. So okay. there was a boxing match here in the Houston area over the weekend. Yeah. Um, I hadn't I hadn't 
I didn't know anything about it. One of my buddies, one of my buddies said, oh, like uh, my, my former frat boy, or I guess they're frat boys forever. But uh, my, my buddy got tickets to this boxing match, which of course is called uh, Misfits Boxing. I had never heard anything about it. And it was like five or six fights. The first fight was two like little women. I'm talking like they couldn't have been any more than like five, two. They were like little tiny ladies, like, you know, throw, throwing punches at each other. Uh, and they declared a winner. Then there was some middle fights, three or four fights in the middle. One um, one participant was Le'Veon Bale, who, of course, used to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I believe. Is Pittsburgh Steelers or New Orleans Saints? Okay. I don't know. He was a former football player. He won his fight. And then the headliner, the headliner of the evening was two women who um, were both, they're both, big on only fans i guess they were into some other stuff some youtube videos and and doing yeah, a little bit page, of like maybe in- page vans huh? page van zant versus ellie brooke why does page van zant sound familiar because i think i think one of them used to be an mma fighter but they have both since yeah. gone into only fans oh really yeah and only fans create okay and and my issue here was um yeah they're Fine, they're they're a little they're more talented than the first girls, but they're quite clearly not. I mean, one punch from one of the middle fighters obviously would have KO'd these ladies. It's not even not even a question. So it's kind of strange. I guess the only fans of the MMA tie-in made them the headliner. But my bone to pick was that the fight ended in tie, and I get it. You can you, oh you, yeah, you you yeah. in the fight you in the fight in a tie, and that way you can buy yourself a rematch. But you could have had a rematch to, no matter who won especially if it was a close fight. But I thought, and I could be wrong about this, just my conspiratorial brain is saying that they they called this fight a tie because neither one of these women, no matter how, how strong and beautiful and brave they are, would have been able to take, to, to wear losing the fight. So it was just easier for them to say, oh, you guys are both great. It had big participation trophy vibes yeah. in the fight. And I'm like, dude, we stayed here. We've been here for three hours. I didn't think of these people. Now I'm kind of invested and the whole thing ends in a tie. And I'm just like, yeah. why, why even it's like Rocky Balboa and Thunderlips, right? I don't it's even like, know. I never saw that. All right. Then I guess we won't do that <laughs> one. Uh, I don't, I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I cha- was it for charity or something? No. I, okay. And that's another thing is that I was calling it, incorrectly uh amateur boxing and i think it's a professional league it's also and this is just i guess to give context as they like to say of where we are this is like an influencer boxing league that's why they had a former mma star and it was started by a a big what's his name ksi is the guy who started he's a huge youtube streamer i think he got famous like literally streaming video games so we're at the and the, the whole place was full of like "Quote unquote influencers." For the record, um, uh, Gideon, Gideon, whatever he's kind of like sure. a wacky YouTuber, and he does he does stunts. And um, there was a fake, a fake, not the real, but a fake Jake Paul who like had had the tattoos, and yet he wasn't as ripped as Jake Paul. But it like it's this weird, this weird world that I guess we've hit the wall as far as the internet is concerned. So now they're so the real world turned into the internet and now the internet is turning back into the real world. And oh, these yeah. ladies, Oh yeah. Oh, they're both winners. We're all, you're all winners in our book. It's weird to me. I don't yeah. Know. The internet is, is the reality. Like, so like I, I, when my dad and I, we, we smoke cigars, you know, outside at night. And that's, that's the, uh, that's the entertainment world. And it's like, we're sitting outside watching the cars go by. <laughs> puffing away it's like yeah too old do and i have to tell him all the time it's like we have people uh who we'll go on their evening walks like the older couples go on their evening walks and stuff and i'm like man how many people think you and i are just an old crotchety gay couple <laughs> who sit in the fucking front lawn here he's like i never thought about that i'm like yeah man i don't want this is- no <laughs> so uh but that's the that's the entertainment and social media that's life on that um i i'm gonna bounce back to our not hating women stuff, but um, I'm going to play audio from this video. This because we have to document everything. That's what we do. We're a society who puts everything out. That's the reality. I don't know what this is. I po- I commented four weeks ago on this, 
and my notifications get blown up all day. Like every day for the last four weeks, my notifications get still blown up. Uh, this is simply a video that says trigger warning. And it looks like it's outdoor, like driveway camera footage. It says POV, which is, uh, doesn't it say for personal view? Point, point, point of, of view? view? Point of view, thank you. The night before Thanksgiving and our son's birthday, you snuck the married woman you were cheating with into our home. All right, let's hear what the video has to say. You brought her in my house! You brought her in my fucking house! You fucking brought her in my fucking house! You brought her in my fucking house! For the next 30 hours, you tried to convince me nothing happened, that I was crazy. On your son's birthday! I believed you until she, she texted you while you were in the shower. You finally confessed. Okay. Uh, I simply wrote, what drove him to cheat? Question mark. The amount of women who are just attacking me left and right. How horrible of a human, ba- me, me, a human being and a man I am. No, nobody deserves, nobody gets driven to cheat any of this, blah, 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 blah. It's hilarious, the double standard of videos where women will get caught cheating and you'll get the women out there saying, well, maybe if you paid attention to her needs. But when a guy, a guy can't, clearly. A guy is supposed to drop everything, divorce a woman, then cheat, even though he'll wind up paying through the fucking nose, you know, in the end. Uh, so I just, Eric, I'm trying to dissuade you from ever getting married. You need to stay single, alone, and miserable like your <laughs> your uncle Izzo. It's very simple. Um, yeah. Look, I don't know. I, don't, I hadn't seen that video. I don't know anything about that case. But it is, I mean, obviously the double standards are just through the roof on almost everything, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, the, the list is, is really long. But when, again, I guess this is the same question. Like, when... When did we start doing this? I guess nobody knew. Maybe it was it was happening the whole time, and obviously we didn't know because there wasn't Twitter, there wasn't Instagram or YouTube or any of that stuff where people decided that the entire world needs to know about their problems. I mean, I make a bunch of videos that come on your show every week and, and do some other shows and stuff, but it's never crossed my I mean, look, man, to be honest with you, like I haven't had like that like tough of a life where I want to complain. Like you have good days, you had bad days, but it's never dawned on me to like air my own dirty laundry but i guess she's maybe trying to get him fired from his job or she's trying to get get uh his friends to 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 step away from him i don't know what the hell's going on and there is another thing i I know because you mentioned that your comments or your your notifications have been blowing up because you left a comment and that that's one thing i i've experienced too just as a joke me personally i have written like crazy left-wing things on like right-wing accounts because I want to see if the right can take a joke. Um, And it's funny because they don't, I mean, all you'd have to do is click my profile. It's not private. You could see it. It was a joke. Obviously, maybe I'm not funny. Maybe the sarcasm is a little bit too dry. I don't know. But people, uh, they fly off the handle at comments. And last thing here, as far as the comments are concerned, um, I, I, I don't know if this is good or bad that people are reading the comments, but a buddy of mine, went on to some uh, some chick who does, like, a dating show. I forget her name, but apparently it's a pretty big show. Um, she's got a lot of followers. She's got a lot of clout, as the kids would say. And there was something where she was, like, she had, she had highlighted a story about how, oh, like, a, a short guy or something, like, and, and there, there, was no, there was no love for him. It was all pretty much hate, and it's, like, that's quite clearly something that he cannot control. But mm. the point is, a buddy of mine wrote in the comments that he was uh, tall, basically. He, all, all he said is, I'm single and I'm tall. Mm-hmm. And his notifications have been blown up. But I think that just speaks to the the shallow Who nature and years. the double standard, right? And, and, okay, I know I said last thing, but this oh, is fine. really the last thing. Several years ago, uh, even before I moved to New York, so this is a long time ago, and I made the point that you have these dating apps and um, men – have to put their height. Yeah, right? you can't even get a profile. Go but ahead. The women don't have to put their weight. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm, I'm five seven. I make no qualms about that. And I have, I, I don't put my height in there because I know when I'm on dating sites, I, I'm gonna get swiped no matter what. Just a height thing, right? So when a woman, I can't tell you how many women will have first questions they ask me first. How, just the, the, when Bumble was women first, 
the first question I get, how tall are you, sweetie? And I'd go, how yeah. much do you weigh, baby? And that was it. Yeah. And the amount of fly, oh, well, you're, you can't handle it, narcissist, blah, blah, blah. Like, are you, wh why is my question any less of value than yours? I'm sorry. I, I want a girl who is uh, athletic, has a very low body fat percentage, fake tits, goes to the gym. What, what, is that wrong? Am I wrong for wanting that? Um, Apparently. Yeah, I know. Can you explain the the bear versus man thing that's been going around? Oh, yeah. So this, I, I think it's kind of subsiding now, right? But uh, I don't know, a, dude. I don't know, but go ahead. Is it? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's still going, but um, yeah, maybe a week or two ago, this guy went around. I think he's a TikToker. If I'm not mistaken, like he's big on TikTok and went around. And and I just want to also say this that we we genuinely don't know. He may he may have spoken to dozens of women who picked the man and just didn't play that because it wasn't right. going to get clicks. But anyways, he asked them if they would rather be trapped in the woods with a random dude or a bear. And a lot of them, I, what, eight or nine out of 10 of these women picked the bear yeah. because the disconnect is the, the disconnect is so, is so real. Then that and became, it became a comment that women would say on like videos of guys being narcissists, you'd have women say, see, this is why we choose the bear. This is so I would choose the bear. I don't know who this is. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, I'm going to pull up. So maybe you could get a visual and tell me who this is. Uh, and I, can just, just really quickly. Yeah. To, oh, I don't know. I've never seen this, but um, okay. I've known women personally in San Francisco who claim to love this, like, Oh, compassion, LGBTQ, like, oh, emotional men, all this stuff. But then we'll also, in the same paragraph, not the same breath specifically, but in the same line of speaking, we'll say, oh, no, well, I don't, I don't want that. I, I want a roughneck. I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to the dude. I'm going to bang the dude smoking well, on the porch. We're going to get there. We're going to build up to a crescendo <laughs> on this part, right? I'm going to play this video. Hold on to what you just said. I think it's so wrong that we don't constantly talk about the fact that women, when we have to walk at night, we can't wear headphones, we can't listen to a podcast, we have to have our keys in between our fingers, we have to have our hand on some sort of mace, we're looking behind ourselves constantly, we can't near, walk near a bush, we can't walk near a tree. When we get home, we have to be so careful as we open the front door in case someone <laughs> attacks us then. And then when we go inside our house, we have to not turn our lights on. The amount of bruises on my legs from having to try and crash into my furniture mm -hmm. because someone outside might be watching for which apartment I live in, so I have to leave the lights off for about 15 minutes right, so that true. they can't figure it out. It's like, if you think about the stress that women are under and they're like, why are women's hormones out of control? Do you think it could be the cortisol from trying yeah. to stay alive? <laughs> I took right, and of course I said, call the bear, which got 4,281 <laughs> likes and a stream full of comments. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, yeah. yeah this is yeah, if I don't fucking know. Of course, some of the women were were upset about this as usual. But wait a second. I thought they said they wanted the bear, dude. They told us they wanted the bear. Right. And here, okay, here, here we here, here I am again. And maybe it's our, our age difference, but I'm going to try to keep it glass half full. And, and get, this is like a backhanded compliment. It's like, and I was talking to my buddy about this. It's like, they don't. Obviously, they don't want the bear, but they're too stupid to tell you, which I guess is a little bit better than actually wanting a. They don't want the bear. It's the same girl who who pretends to like all this, you know, sensitive LGBTQ, you know, bisexual men nonsense, but they don't. They actually don't want that. It's the same thing with the bear. Um, they they just don't realize the the level of cognitive dissonance, or they don't realize exactly what they're saying. So. I don't know. Would you rather be stupid enough to not even know why this is wrong or just stupid enough to pick the bear? I genuinely don't know. It's a mess either way. And you know what this also reminds me of? Of yeah. course, this lady creating problems like, oh, I, I, have to, I bump into my furniture or whatever. Uh, that's basically the same man, that the race baiters are constantly using, right? Like, oh, uh, there's, there's racism around every corner. And, um, uh, Angela Rye, bro. I don't know. I don't know if you know her or, no. or follow her, but no. um, she is just an awful, awful shill. And they they create these problems, and I guess the solution is what makes them money. 
and there's people still buying it. That's the crazy part about it. After all these years, you could snap out of it. Maybe I was never that deep in. I was never like a crazy hardcore leftist Californian, but I remember being young and being like, wait, this doesn't, doesn't really add up, but whatever. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to uh, put up a fight or anything. Now, of course that was long before the crate, like this crazy level of insanity. So I don't know how people are still buying it. And last thing, another glass half full moment is that I, I'm hopeful that it's not as bad in real life as it is on social media, but I truly don't know. Angela Rye doesn't have a single white person on any of her content on social media. Oh, she's, I got into like this deep. So the thing she's doing now is wearing these like thick rim glasses. I guess they, you know, she thinks they make her look more smarter. Um, But I got into this like deep and I didn't comment because I I feel like, and maybe they win on this, but, I feel like they will try to get your account and you've probably dealt with this. They'll try to get your account banned and, 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 and do all this sort of stuff, which I should probably just put behind me, but she has gone in recent, in recent days, just the last couple posts of hers have been, I mean, I'm talking about, it's one thing to say, Oh, like, Oh yeah. White people are racist, but she has literally invented this like race war and it, it's it's so crystal yeah, clear. Yeah, that's why I don't and, I don't I can't do it anymore. I really can't. Uh, I had a I was before we went live today. I was on um, a police panel, and um, we were to, we were on uh, Scotty Nell Hughes's uh, 360 view with Scotty Nell Hughes, and it was talking about how the Republicans just now introduced a bill uh, for more police, uh, pro police stuff, fund the police. Make it like more harsher crimes if you attack them. It's all bullshit. It's all political. It's, it's just ironic how they're doing this now during an election year versus the last several years. And it was me, uh, a retired uh, Washington, D.C. cop who happened to be black and a retired uh, white guy as well, too. And I, I gave my opinion on a topic. The black guy did and the other guy did and this and that. And then the black guy keeps going off and off and off and off. So you could tell it's clearly about division and racism. So I flat out say... Um, I don't know why I'm frozen. Why am I looking frozen like this? Oh, hang on. Well, anyways, yeah, I can hear you just fine. No, yeah, you could. Yeah, you know, I you could see me. But I can't see. You. Um, there I no, there I am. <laughs> Hi, I could see me again. Anyways, I I flat out said, dude, just this is racism. You're talking about racism. You're talking about race culture. Blah, blah, blah. Well, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. You, know, you are. I've been on enough of these panels and of this. I don't care anymore. I don't. And I'm. T- I, it's like it really does suck. When, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a damn duck, and I'm tired of people not acknowledging that. So if you've got white re- racism, I'm just not even engaging anymore because, like, yeah, great, you hate white people, but then you want us to be a con- Whatever, move on with your life, dude. I don't care. It, it's I don't know what the end goal is, but I don't know uh, how people could be so stupid to buy what these idiots are selling. But then again, too, they're so fucking good at selling it. So I, it's it's a, it's a it's a shame, it's a damn shame. You you kept talking about her, who Mosley or Mosley, who was who was the woman who just got indicted, yeah. but but really um, nothing happened. Marilyn Mosby, I think. You know what? That's actually a good point. I, I got to follow up on that because I think Dude. she actually got sentenced. No, she didn't. You didn't see she her. Didn't. You didn't see her riding down the escalator, holding her hands up in the air with the other black. I think it was a congressman, and they're like, "Justice is served." It's like, wait a second. If a white guy got committed or, or convicted or, 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 sell, or prosecuted with the crime that she did, it was fraud, right? It was fraud. She was uh, uh, yeah. It was like it was like mortgage fraud, like a weird type of like scam she was running, which was clearly an abuse of when she was in office. Yes, which blows me away because I am a hundred percent. I was anti anti uh, Trump pardoning Rod Blagojevich who was Illinois' governor that got uh, uh, given six years in prison. Motherfucker should have served the entire six years. When you, or maybe he did serve six years and he had a few more years left. Whatever the sentence is, he should have served the full thing. If you're in a position of power and you're a politician, fuck you. You 100% do not get any leeway whatsoever. But that's just me. But I can't imagine being like, you, 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 you got the evidence. And yeah, the judge goes light on you. They don't convict you. But you're you're celebrating your criminal activity going down the fucking escalator. Okay. Yes, and and I think that is um, I think I, I would have to look into it myself. I saw all, all the like you know Angela Rye posting every day about all oh, justice for Marilyn Mosby, um. But I think it's it is quite literal proof 
of the civil conflict that we are in. And I also wanted to say that Angela Rye is constantly race baiting, but it's it's quite obviously not about race. And I made this point, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe this is why they're also going crazy, but as far as men are concerned, as far as black men are concerned, yes, obviously there's still some weirdo liberals who, who are drinking the Kool-Aid, but a lot of people, we see it in the Bronx, we see, bro, you, you could go to, you could go to Oakland. Do you think the Oakland thugs, do you think the East Oakland, Cal, like East Oakland, California thugs are on board with all this LGBTQ nonsense? No, it's oh. mostly, of course, awfuls, the liberal white women, but also men, these weird little soy boys who are 21 years old, like, right, like still in college or fresh out of college. And they, their stupid haircuts and their green hair, whatever. Those are the people that are on your side, but they would not denounce them even though they're white. So they say they would, but they obviously won't. And it trickles down to everything with the bear and, and all this stuff that it's, it's quite obviously completely fake and phony, but here we are. And, and I guess this is the theme. This is my theme now. Like you, I guess you're a bad cop. I'll be good cop. But I, I genuinely think it's going to take a long time. Obviously I could be totally wrong, but we have hit the wall. The bumble thing was pretty big. And maybe a lot of people feel like that's minuscule, but I think, We've hit the wall, and we're going back the other way. Which is, as far as what? As far as just like the insanity, right? So we're no. ushering back a little bit of normalcy. No. Like the whole Bumble, th- I don't know, Bumble has been around for what, at least 10 years? Or I don't know, eight eight or 10 years? Okay. And after so many years, they're realizing, oh, yeah, uh, women aren't going to make the first move. Yeah, so they're going to take women, and away. When you look, uh, there was a, a, a guy who did a study. It's like... Five percent of men, like the totality of men who are on dating sites, even remotely have a chance. I mean, you look at because women, they're they're it's it's a monetary and it's a height standard, right? It's six what well, six figures, six inches, and six uh, feet, and it, it's yep. and you'll get a girl the second she's on Bumble as like two thousand swipes, and a guy could be on for fucking five months and doesn't get three. So it's, you know, the odds are not in your favor as a guy, but that's what it, it's weird. It's not what it was, man. This is like, I, I, I did date a girl many years ago and she made this, um, she made a really good point about something where when you, when you first start dating before social media and even dating apps, it was like, you know, you, you had conversations with somebody and then you met him a couple times and then you, you had to wonder like you wondered if this person was interested in you. That would the part of the allure of the dating process, especially in the beginning, was the man, does this person like me? And that was kind of an aphrodisiac itself, too. Then you get familiarity breeds contempt and you're together for six months and you fucking can't stand each other because whatever. That's that's how it is. But dating apps took that out of the way. Because when you go to a bar, maybe you're there for a drink and with some friends, and you're not necessarily there. And it happenstance and circumstance gets you to like to, oh, your eyes lock. And I wasn't counting on this. You go to a dating app, you're specifically going there for it. And then yep. what kills me is women. Dude, fucking women just don't get it. And I am so blunt. I am so blunt. I've said this for years. Men use sex to get to emotion. Women use emotion to get to sex. I don't know how many times I have to say this to a woman. Uh, hey, just to let you know, I talk about sex as easily as and as frequently as I do politics, faith, or going to the gym. It's it's a converse, it's a topic of conversation with me all the time. If you have a problem, oh, no, it's not a problem. And then, you know, two weeks into the con- do you just, do you, we always have to talk about sex all the time. It's it's a part of a conversation. I actually am very fascinated about the subject. And fucking, if I'm, I'm trying to date you, I'm sexually attracted to you. The second I stop talking about sex with you, there's an issue because I no longer want it with you. Women don't fucking get it, dude. They don't. They just do not fucking get it. And I think um, maybe the pendulum needs to go back the other way, and we need to go back to arranged marriages. It, that's actually not that bad of an idea. idea. And I, I was um, I was talking to a buddy of mine recently, and, you know, we all know now that uh, remember when is the lowest form of conversation. Shout out to Tony Soprano. But I remember when I was a kid, and – you know, a couple of buddies of mine, like one of our parents would drop us off at like the amusement park I, in California. It's called great America. I don't know, like six flags or whatever, roller coasters and all that stuff. And this was maybe, uh, the late nineties. Like I was a kid. Um, and obviously pre social media, pre dating apps, all that stuff. It would just quite literally, I'm not joking. 
uh, just go sit down at, at the same table with a handful of girls who you kind of thought were your own age. And then you would just talk and yeah, your kids. So maybe you exchange numbers. Maybe you talk for a couple weeks, but that of course has gone, that has gone out of the window, whether it's social media, whether it's me too, whether it's all this, uh, you know, this hysteria, all these, these gym girls who, who are baiting men into like, you know, they wear these tiny little shorts and these leggings and all that stuff. And then they get mad when, when they get a little bit of attention, but of course they wanted the attention. It's the same thing. And this might, might be apples to oranges, but there was a story out of San Francisco, how after the deadliest year for overdoses in in the city, it came down a little bit and they took credit and they celebrated, oh, well, we're doing good. <laughs> and the, the, re, the reduction in overdoses, this is where it gets crazy. And I use this clip in my videos all the time, but um, they say, oh, the reduction in overdoses coincides with an increase in law enforcement, federal, state, and local law enforcement on the street. But the city claims it's too early to tell if that's the reason. So you did yeah. you put those people on the street specifically to stop this problem. It starts to work, and then you say, well, we don't know if that was it anyways. Why I mean, you, it's just bizarre. I don't I, – I didn't get to answer this. Uh, in in the in the panel that I was on earlier, and you, you kind of brought it up now. It's like um, somebody brought up a good point, Al. Anytime that a program is like implemented, you see this massive uptick in numbers. It's like, well, yeah, no doubt. It's because it's the first year you implemented this program, so it's the first year you're actually keeping track of this number. Like, if there is all of a sudden a, um, a, 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 a I don't know, a cicada counting. Uh, 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 cicadas are supposed to be really big this year. I haven't seen a fucking one yet. Uh, there's like a cicada, a red eye cicada counting committee. Let's go. Oh my God. Numbers are up 31%. Yeah. That's because you finally had fucking group to count them. So it's the funding that nobody talks about. Right? So it doesn't matter what the program is. Drugs, uh, a tent city for heroin needles, this and that. People are so good at talking about crimes. And then the, like the blame, right? Well, clearly crime is going up. So law enforcement's not able to do their job. And then that means we need more funding or defunding because the cops are doing their job this way. You know what nobody ever looks at is the shell game of money where the shit goes in the background. No, you didn't create a anti-heroin or meth tent city program to fucking solve the problem. You did it because your cousin needed a job. So you appointed a director of a new program for $300,000 a year to, to run this and that money. So now you need to cover his salary and he's going to pad the stats by getting his vendor friends in and go, no, here we got John. John runs the, uh, the, the needle cleaning company. Yeah. Dave, Dave over there. All right. He's got the, the, the street sweepers, right? They'll come in once a week and sweep all the, yeah, all the, 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 we'll bid, we'll build, but just take their contract because it's a bid, it's a, you got to bid for it. Nobody fucking looks at any time a new program comes up or let's blame this or anti this or do you, look at even defunding the police. Well, defunding the police, which would never happen and it doesn't happen the way you think it does. You have a group comes up that says, we're going to campaign on defund the police, sponsor and support my campaign. <laughs> And by the way, I'm organizing the campaign. So out of a 5013C, I'm giving myself a salary, ah, 250 grand a year. It's all fucking money, dude. It's insane. Yes. So all these problems are just, they're not problems. They're, they're the ultimate form of sales, right? What, is, what do businesses do? They solve problems. Eric is hungry. Afterwards, Eric either goes out to fast food place or goes to the grocery store. Both one of those businesses, they're there to solve his problem. Shit, I'm going to go and I got to print something up, but I'm out of ink. Oh, my God, Office Depot. They're going to solve my problems because they've got ink on hand. Every business is there to solve problems, and that's all fucking all this shit is. I don't know where I went. Yeah, so, and, what's um, else there? I don't know. Well, and, and San Francisco is notorious for it, right? I'm sure, I'm sure it's happening all over the place, but... Um, one of the biggest. It is, it's got to be one of the biggest. Staggering. It is monumental. The level of like these NGOs and not for profits or whatever that that are just running these crazy scams. And if they obviously look, first of all, you'll never solve the problem even if you want it to. But if they do solve the problem, then they're going to be out of a job and they're going to be out of a scam to run. Hundred percent. They don't want that. That's what these elections are. People, that's what, if you look at it, that's why 
I, I and I hate saying this because my delivery sounds horrible, but my empathy is fucking massive. You take Chicago's black community, you destroy their household, you destroy their school system, right? I think I covered it years ago. I believe in 2014, 2015, something like that. There was 67% of boys who were black from Chicago graduated high school. Well, they're responsible adults right now at that age, right? They're in their 20s. So you have literal ignorance. If you look at, look at how urban young black youth speaks, cannot understand them. There is a massive division in language. We used to call it Ebonics when I was in grammar school. Well, the Tower of Babel, what happened with the Tower of Babel? God confounded and confused everybody's tongues. So instead of one language, you had 70 languages. If you can't communicate, you can't relate, you can't connect, can't solve the problem. So what do you do? You have an uneducated, broken home kid who's full of emotions and some silver tongue cocksucker uh, a politician comes in, speaks the language they understand, presses in on the button and sells on the pain points, and you keep perpetuating the system of politics. You're never going to solve anything on purpose because you, you run out of your funnel. It's like if my funnel is, I got to get votes every fucking year. Oh, I know the community I'm going to go to. You're dumb, you're young, you're ignorant, you're emotional. I'm going to, it's better. It's better than telling a girl that you fucking are a manager at Wrigley Field and you can get her season tickets for the Cubs game and you make a quarter of a million dollars a year, come home, sit on my cock. It's easier than that shit. So I don't fucking know. And um, yeah. this kind of, uh, I think to, to your point, maybe this is a, I don't know, I think this is a, a, a good Segway, maybe, but um, we all saw Trump out in the Bronx recently, yes, right? Yes, yes, and um, and he brought on Chef G. Uh, I don't know if people are familiar with Chef G. I don't believe he's a household name. He's not Drake or Kanye or anything like that. But I have a, I, I, I have a little bit of a bone to pick with Chef G. And I, this is how this is how widespread I think that people are done with the Democratic regime is that you got guys like Chef G, who is a stone cold criminal, um, in, endorsing Trump. But hey, how did that even come about? How, like who who reached out to who? But again, to your point about these broken homes, I mean, Chef G, I knew I learned about him a couple of years ago, and I this is crazy. I made the assumption you can go if you wanted to, you can go check out my Instagram and scroll through hundreds of posts and see where I said, and I didn't know this at the time, but I said, this seems like a gang territory war. Because there were memorials everywhere. There's candles, there's balloons, all this stuff. I later learned that that was that was Chef G and his rivals were absolutely terrorizing a section of Brooklyn. So, I mean, I don't know if Trump looked into that. I don't know if his detractors are going to say this guy is getting endorsed by a criminal. But also on the left, they love criminals. So uh, is it a catch-22? What the hell is really going on out there? And, and or my, my only like rational sane person who like, you know what? It's same thing with Amber Rose, right? She's literally famous for conducting the slut walk, and she's a, a feminist, but it says, I don't want to do this anymore. So what's actually going on out there, bro? I do. I, I, mean, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. It's insa- you know what? You're not on the street as much as you used to be. This is true. Yeah, did you You didn't take that video of the bear? <laughs> what was the other one? I can't remember. I didn't. You know what? I didn't week. do the bear video, but I talked to some kids. Uh, I talked to some kids outside of the boxing match. I wasn't really planning to. Um, so it wasn't like it wasn't really planned out, but it was good. And I still have to edit it. I have to do a bunch of editing. It's like, yeah, I, I wish I had an intern, bro. Like, I need oh, my gosh. I've it. been saying that for six years now. Um, let's hear Robert De Niro. Oh, God. Robert De Niro's in the news. Uh, yeah, I I have a problem with Bobby because he plays a tough guy in every mob movie he's ever been in. He's not even, I mean, he's maybe an eighth Italian, whatever. Uh, I don't think he's ever played. Well, he played an Italian in Bronx Tale. That was it. He played a Jew in a casino and an Irish guy in, uh, 
Goodfellas. But anyways, here's Bob, here's here's Bobby De Niro in New York. That's what he's got to say about second Trump presidency. Right now, he will never leave. He will never leave. You know that. He will never leave. He gets in. I can tell you right now. He will. So if he gets in again, he will never leave. And of course, apparently he's been uh, masturbates daily. This is not my shit. What is this? Oh, it's an anti-porn. They, um, I guess he got into it. Simple enough. Oh, Susanna Hoff still looks great. Oh my god. All right. Anyways, but that's uh, Robert De Niro freaking out in New York. Do you think celebrities still have a sway on the common folk? No, I don't. And uh, to to that point, who is this for? Right, you. This is for men, uh, people in their seventies. Do you think a Gen Z kid who's going to vote for the first time is looking at Robert De Niro for advice? Like he doesn't. Oh, bro, I'm barely old enough to remember Robert De Niro like being a big movie star and you know playing these huge roles. Like who who are you hoping to sway with this? I, I don't know. And the thing that kills me is um, there are, if we're taking Hollywood on its merits alone, right? Meryl Streep is a perfect example of a, a proper age progression in a profession that uh, favors you at a certain dynamic, right? Most people are, are typecast. I don't care what they are. Heartthrob. Uh, uh, sex symbol, uh, uh, action hero. Schwarzenegger is a, is a great example of when it's fucking time to hang it up, right? Stallone. I think Stallone should be done with his stuff, even though I'm enjoying Tulsa King. Uh, Meryl Streep is is dead on because she was never a heartthrob. She's sadly, sadly one of the greatest actresses of our fucking, the history of, of cinema, film, and stage. But De Niro is the epitome of tough guy to doddering old fool who does kind not like know Howard Stern. Oh my, uh, perfect. Perfect. Stern yeah. who got famous for what? Having girls ride the fucking Sibian in his, in his studio with video feed. And now he's supposed to be the moral compass. You had Carmen Electra masturbating in your fucking studio. But you're the moral compass, right? You're right. I'm not sure how that happens. But as far as De Niro is concerned, again, we, we don't know who this is targeting. And as much as I I, I truly, I don't really think celebrities have that much sway. Even even like Taylor Swift, right? You think in a blink of an eye, she could sway everybody to whatever side she wanted. But I don't think that's the case. And the difference between uh, Bobby De Niro and these weirdo Democrat regime puppets or whatever workhorses, um, the difference between... Those what what is De Niro like eighty? He's like Biden's age. Yeah, but be, the, the difference between that and, he just, and a oh. guy like what's that? I, well, Pacino just had a kid, but I think De Niro oh, yeah. did too. And I think the owner of the Raiders just had a kid with a twenty six year old too. So it's pr- pretty crazy. Um, which oh, which should man. which should breathe hope into everybody. But my point is, as much as I, I I'll admit this is this is the weird thing about Chef G is like. He did have some good songs. I had no idea he was integral in terrorizing Brooklyn. But the difference between him and Bobby De Niro is it makes more sense. Like, you can get a whole bunch of 21, 22, or 25-year-olds that are going to say, oh, all right, he likes him. I kind of like him, too. But the De Niro thing is you're you're preaching to the choir. You're not you're not winning anybody over. And they're not winning anybody over. I don't think, I don't think anybody on this planet can say, you know what, I really like this thing. They're going to always go back to, like, prescription pills or something that they're claim to fame. Like we lowered prescription drug prices. All right, fine, bro. But it's one thing to get, I mean, with all the, all the stupid rappers who you may or may not even like, but it's clear that at least they are working towards an achievable goal of swaying the mind of a 25 year old versus Bobby De Niro, who wants to convince somebody in their seventies or eighties who saw them in a movie back in the eighties that Trump is bad. I, I'm just, I'm confused by the whole thing. He's, he had a kid at 80 years old too. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, he had a kid at 80 years old. Uh, so if he lives to a hundred, he'll see. 
Uh, yeah, there was. I, I don't know if I can even play this fucking video with him. Like he's getting in the face of uh, somebody. Like uh, some some crop. Dude, sorry, it just like just it's storming. Like I can. It was it was sunny when we started. And now yeah, it's, it I, looks it's, like it's night outside. Been really weird. Oh, here it is. Hang on, let's see if I get this. I'll see if I get the audio. You are gangsters. You are gangsters. You are gangsters. You are you. <laughs> he tells somebody in a MAGA hat, you're gangsters, and they tell him you're washed up. Fuck you. He is washed up. He is. Get rid of your entourage and your bodyguards. Holy shit. What? And here's the other thing. This is the other thing that kills me. They're actors. They literally get paid. Oh, we, I think we lost you anyways. Well, I, we lost Eric. They literally get paid to perform for a living. Uh-huh. Yeah, we got you back. I hear your audio. No, you're good. Is it really? Yeah, I, I knew that was going to happen, like, because the storm, uh, storm is rolling through. Did you, um, did you not hear, uh, Bobby, Bobby D like get, get yelled at, uh, by some guy in a MAGA hat and said, you're washed up and he goes, fuck you. Yeah. I, I heard that. I heard that. I, I only went out for a couple seconds. I think when you were explaining it, but it's just really weird. Like, that that type of thing to me, and again, maybe this is conspiratorial, but that has to be like payroll stuff, bro. Dude, like what is they literally when your profession, when your profession, like it 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 kills me. Um, uh, Joe Joe Pantalone, uh, or excuse me, not Pantalone, Palatano, I believe his name is for his, uh, He played one of the uh, Fratelli brothers in Goonies, and he played Cipher in uh, The Matrix. Where he said, you know, he's, he's been put back in the Matrix. He goes, I want to come back as somebody who's important, an actor. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's fu- these people who read scripted words written for them by the real, the real geniuses who are the writers. Uh, they, they get paid to, to be told what to do. Monkey see, monkey do. So I think it that's blows what Seinfeld me- did. Oh, my God. He writes and performs it. I mean, him and Larry David as well. Yeah, Larry yeah, Seinfeld is a genius, and so is Larry David, yeah. So. This, um, we, okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting sidetracked here because we Go just ahead. did, like we just did a hurricane, and now it seems like we might, are we going to do another one? I really don't want to, but that, that aside, um, yeah, Bobby D is a clown at his best. Yeah, he is, and he's got oh. seven kids. And I didn't know that, um. The speaking of uh, some of these actors, it's weird too because uh, the Soprano cast, right? So we have uh, Drea De Matteo, who of course played Adriana, who was visible, and this is another reason why I think the pendulum is swinging back because she visibly was, was embarrassed about voting for Bo Jiden. Was that thunder? Joe Biden. Yes, that was that. Your mic picked that up. Yeah, damn, um, dude. I was I was doing a podcast. I was doing an interview. I was in mid-interview, uh, I guess it was two weeks ago now, when uh, the power went out, and we were out of power for four days. I was gonna, I was gonna text you, the difference because I wasn't of- sure it was gonna come back before Tuesday of last week. Yeah, you could hear that thunder pretty damn good. Yeah, and there's, I, I mean, there's really nothing I could do about it. But um, hopefully, before I, if I hope, I don't want to cut out again. Or we're, we're wrapping up here. Yeah, but, we're good. Um, we're good. Drea De Matteo was embarrassed about voting for Joe Biden. And, and she admitted it, and I I applaud that. She's like, you know what? I didn't do the research. I got caught up in the emotion. I didn't know what was happening. Now it makes sense. But then you have some of the other guys uh, who who played Christopher, her yeah. husband or her boyfriend in the, in the very same show, who was caught up in this Bobby De Niro uh, like yeah. sort of Hollywood payroll thing. Yeah, I can't. I lost. I lost all respect for any um, Sopranos shit when they. Like I used to watch the clips or whatnot a lot, and they were doing an interview with him, the guy who played Christopher, and then David Chase, the writer, and they were talking about how Phil Leotardo, the guy who his character, well, yeah, he came. That was a symbolism. He came out of the closet because he was really gay. That's why he hated Vito for being gay. And I'm like, really, the, Frank Vincent, who played him, you know, you got to. It's like the guy died, and he was the the, the least. Well, it's like they 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 had to go that agenda. For the LGBTQ shit to appease the people. It's like it's a character. It's a fucking made up character. And, you know, however many years, 10, 15 years after the, the it's, it's over. Now all of a sudden, yeah, the, the, the character was gay. And that's what we were trying to write at the time. You were? 
No, you weren't. Shut the fuck up. So stupid. Yeah, it, it's absolutely laughable. I, I still like this. I mean, I haven't watched it in a long time, but I stopped watching. I, I'm just going to leave it. Left, yeah. I, I want to leave it as like one of the greatest shows ever and not really get too deep into like the weirdo agenda they have going on now. No, I don't mind it at all. That's good. All right. Well, uh, the storm. It's, uh, we'll, we'll end on the storm. The thunder out there, everybody. It's pretty impressive. All right, Eric, tell everybody about your book, please. And tell everybody about the report and Alpine clips they can watch, which are fucking awesome. Oh, thank you, bro. Um, New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued, uh, eight and a half by 11, full color. We'll call it 260 pages, like a coffee table book. It's a conversation starter that is available on Amazon. New York City 2020, Gotham Unglued by Eric Butler. That's the easiest way to find it. And yeah, check me out on Spreely. I always want to say like all social media platforms, but I am not on all social media platforms. Uh, Spreely, Rumble, YouTube, Report, and Opine, where I'm just kind of sharing the news with people. Like I don't have like scripts or bullet points. I'm you're just kind of learning with me, and I do full disclosure sort of harp on the Bay Area because that's where I spent most of my life. And you can you can um, it's just a way for me to vent the insanity that's happening in California, along with some other stories, some weirdo race baiting in Texas of all places. It just never ends. So check it out. It's freely rumble YouTube. All right, kids have a great damn day. This is the Rancid Vizzo show here on Spreely media. Uh, tomorrow we got the burn pit podcast boys, Scott and Maddie. God knows what we'll be talking about then, but I just, I have no idea. You have a great damn day. Go out and help somebody today. And if you can't help them, just do not hurt them. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>